they got an Aiden out there. They're oh, it's only Aiden, bro. Get it's hurt. only Aiden. Let's go, boys. Let's bro. go. What's going on guys, it's Vinny, bringing you all some more fun and crazy duels on Battlefront 2. If you are new to this channel, hello and welcome. Today's video is going to be a little different, I'm starting a new tips and tricks playlist and this will be the first featured video. Today I will be going over the jump attack, or the jump attacks. If you're a veteran, this video was made for you. Even if you're a noob and you just recently got the game, I highly recommend you keep watching this video. If any of you have heard of and or watched the Battlefront Bros YouTube channel, they made a video about, I think it was three weeks ago, titled The Biggest Dueling Secrets The Moves Pros Don't Want You To Know. In that video, they covered their version of the jump attack, and I gotta say, I don't think they got it quite right. No disrespect to Battlefront Bros, I appreciate the content they put out and I support their channel, but for all intents and purposes, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the real jump attacks. There are timestamps in the comment section, so if you'd like to skip ahead to the specific parts you want to see, go right on ahead. For everyone else, let's get started. Alright, so I broke it down my list into three types of jump attacks. The standard, the advanced, and the step back jump attack. I like the name of the last one, it's my favorite, the rhymes. Just a side note, these are names I came up with, they aren't universally known, it's just so you guys know what I'm referring to for this video. The standard jump attack is what you guys can see me doing right now. It's the least difficult out of the three and anyone can do it. Bear with me if this seems pretty simple or very obvious and unimportant because I'm going to show you how its foundation can help improve your skills and understandings with the other jump attacks. Like I said earlier, this video is catered to everyone, pros and noobs alike. The standard jump attack normally gets used to finish off or weaken down opponents, strike someone in the air who is jumping, or it can be used as a substitute for a lunge attack. Right here is about the right distance where you'd want to go for a standard jump attack. Don't try to find out how many footsteps away I am from the droid, it's more or less of where I'm standing. The next part you see is about where you'd want to start swinging so you can try and get the most distance and lunge out of your attack. You'll see why that is important later. At this point, I'm fully committed to the swing and the attack animation has fully registered. As you can see on screen though, the droid appears to still be alive, but I've already co connected with its hitbox. It looks as though my saber isn't physically hitting it though, and it isn't. It doesn't need to. All you need to do is get a sprinting start, and then as soon as you jump attack, you'll get to attack a little farther than you appear to because you've reached their hitbox. It doesn't matter which saber character you pick for these standard jump attacks. All saber characters can do any of them. What I'm doing here with Kylo Ren is showing you that the distance of the jump attack is about equal to that of a dodge or a lunge attack. Basically, a jump attack allows you to gain the mobility of a dodge and the attack distance of a lunge all in one move and it can be extremely useful if you are quick on your feet and or if you have high sensitivity. Speaking of sensitivity, if you want to improve your gameplay, I would suggest increasing it at least in small increments at a time. When I started playing this game, I got pretty decent at it but I eventually hit a wall. I wasn't improving, but I wasn't getting better either. Or, <laughs> I wasn't getting worse either is what I meant to say. I was just stagnant. I took a look at my settings one day and I decided to turn my sensitivity up and it immensely improved my gameplay. That is, I turned my soldier sensitivity up. The zoomed, I'll get to that in another video. Think of it like this. If you can look quicker, you can turn quicker, then you can attack quicker, or defend yourself, whatever the case may be. Right now my soldier sensitivity is on 100. And I recommend anyone who wants to master the advanced jump attack to try and get comfortable with that setting, or at least close to 100. Like I said earlier, all Saber characters are capable of doing the jump attack, even Grievous. I know his jump is a little weird and it's kind of annoying because it's so short and quick, but you can still do it with him if you set the time correctly. Now I'll show you guys a few examples of what I mean by the standard jump attack. If you've been playing this game for a while, you've probably done this with Vader right after you choke someone, or you had it happen to you. For the newer players watching this, this is always a good idea to do because it almost always ensures guaranteed extra damage on the player that is choked. 99% of the time you are in the air, you can't block. I'll save that 1% exception for another video. 
I mentioned previously that you can jump attack while someone else is in the air. In this case, I took advantage of my freeze ability to keep her there. But if any of you new or experienced players are dealing with a Palpatine, remember that you can punish him for jumping as long as you time your attacks correctly. This is a standard jump attack when someone is down or one shot and you're not quite close enough to lunge attack towards them, so instead you take a jump attack to gain the extra boost you need to hit your opponent. This helps to get you in and out of the fight and helps you avoid being staggered since you're technically attacking from the air and not on the ground. Right here you're going to see me use the standard jump attack with misdirection to kill one of my opponents. We were doing a private 4v4 against some skilled players and this Kylo had decided to emote on me after he killed me earlier. Disrespectful. Disrespectful. Let's see what happens. If you remember what I said about how hitboxes work off of the jump attack and how my lightsaber doesn't need to actually touch my opponent to hit them, you can see that it's part of the same concept. He thought I was running away at first, so when I jumped at him like that and hit him, he wasn't expecting to get hit from that far away, so it caught him off guard. But it was too late for him by then. Alright, it's time to talk about one of my most favorite self-taught techniques. We're going to go over the advanced jump attack. Like I said earlier, if this is something that you like to master and hit consistently, you're going to want a higher soldier sensitivity. If your soldier sensitivity is already at or near 100, then you should be fine. Otherwise, this may be a little tougher, so you could steadily increase it until you're able to turn comfortably. Alright, so I'm going to analyze the situation real quick. I have two opponents in front of me. Anakin is low health, and I believe he has no abilities, but Rey is full, and she could dash strike me if I go for Annie first. I tried freezing both of them, but I only got Rey, so I went after her instead. Okay, so right here, most of the time, when someone is immobilized, either in a force choke, a stun, or like in this example, Kylo's freeze, you can usually get one to two hits on them before they can dodge away from you. In this instance, I set myself up to get at least two to three hits instead of just one to two. I do this, and pay attention to this guys, listen up. I do this by jumping through my opponent's body first, and then swinging my lightsaber so that I end up hitting their back instead of the front of their body. I'll say that again. In order to do an advanced jump attack, you must jump through your opponent and then swing at their back once you're through them. It may sound easy to some of you or tough to some others, but honestly, you're just going to need to practice at it. One thing to note when you're doing this is that you're always going to want to swing to the left or look to the left when you're doing the advanced jump attack. The reason for this is just because most people are comfortable looking over their right shoulder of their character, so it seems natural to swing to that way when you're jump attacking. You could technically do this maneuver turning to the right, but honestly I can probably count on one hand the number of times I've done it to that side and it's just really difficult. I don't know about you guys, but personally my right thumb is more dominant on a controller so I always feel comfortable making a quick hard turn to the left. Alright, let's take a look at this fight. So, Boba landed, and I was going to take him out when I noticed an opportunity. Right here, yep. So, Vader got knocked down, and I saw that he was already at half health. So, I knew that if I could hit him with the dash strike, he would be low, and I could go in for the advanced jump attack. Notice how I'm jumping completely through his body before I swing. And sometimes when you do this, you can end up hitting him twice. Like I did here, it gave me two hit markers, so I knew that I hit him twice. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how it works. Alright, so here I was trying to protect the Han on our team, and we had to deal with Grievous. This is pre-nerf Grievous, by the way, so his claw rush could still jack us all up. But that has been fixed today, finally, so check out the patch notes if you haven't heard about that yet. Anyways, I saw that he was low, and when I proceeded to hit him with my jump attack, I actually missed, but it was fine because it still got me an angle for a follow-up hit. I want you guys to really understand what I'm doing here. I want you to pay attention to the jump attack itself, of course, 
but I also want you to notice how I usually line myself up shoulder to shoulder with my opponent to the best of my ability. I did this for a few reasons. Number one, it helps me get the angle I need to turn into them and swing once I jump through them. And number two, this is the most important one, it's easier to predict and control where they will dodge next. If you are going to work with the advanced jump attack, you need to count your opponent's dodges. And I mean literally, count their dodges. I'm not saying you have to count out loud, like, okay, he did one, two, three, whatever. You don't have to do all that. You should keep track of it because your opponent is the most vulnerable to a jump attack when they are low health and they only have one dodge in their cycle. And what I mean by in their cycle is, okay, so say you spawn into an HUV map and you look at your dodges, it'll say two, right? You dodge twice, you have no dodges in the cycle right now until one goes in, and then you're working with that one dodge until the second one comes back in. When someone is low health and they only have that one dodge charge to work with, that's when they're most vulnerable because then you can predict their movement and then move yourself according to where they're going so that you can end up finishing them off. If you've stayed for this long and you're enjoying this video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like and consider subscribing. I will be making more videos like this soon that will cover parrying, hero matchups, and other dueling strategies and techniques that I know. I'm going to let you guys watch some 1v1s that I had, but I want you to try and keep in mind some of the things I've gone over so far, like counting dodges, lining yourself up shoulder to shoulder with your opponent, or at least trying to, and swinging and looking to the left once you're initiating your jump attack.
してみせよう。In this clip, I actually wanted to get some gameplay of me getting jump attacked a few times, so you guys could see it from a different perspective. If you look right there, you can see that everyone's lightsaber isn't even touching me. It looks like it's a million miles away. It's just like the standard jump attack, how gaining that momentum allowed you to extend your reach to their hitbox in an attack. Just like how I went over with the uh, bots in single player mode in the beginning of the video. The advanced jump attack is basically doing that same thing but jumping no, through your opponent first and then turning while swinging to the right. That's all it is. The last and final maneuver I will be covering today will be the step back jump attack. All right, so let's evaluate the situation. Yoda and I are currently double teaming this Vader who should have a force choke now if, I, if my timing is correct. Also, just a side note, just like how we covered counting dodges, you should also be counting ability cooldowns. And again, I don't mean that in a literal sense. You shouldn't be saying, oh, Dooku has 24 seconds left before exposed weakness comes back, and Maul has 15 seconds before at 9. You don't have to do that. The more you play and understand this game, the more you'll be used to when certain abilities come back for all specific heroes. I'll probably dedicate a video to that uh, topic another time, but back to the fight breakdown. I knew that it would be pointless to go for the standard jump attack since he wasn't currently knocked down or exposed in any way. He could use force choke if I tried to approach in an aggressive manner like that. I was also aware that Vader's teammates would try to flank on us soon if we didn't make any decisions. So I decided to do this. By repositioning behind them, I forced him to choose between looking at me or my teammates. Here's where the step back jump attack comes into play. So listen. Sometimes it can be instinctive for us as the player to button mash someone in the back to death that we have to jump on. While this may sound like a plausible idea, what could end up happening sometimes is that when you take a swing, the person you are trying to pinch between you and your team will dodge, not because they knew you were behind them necessarily, but because that's what most players do who are getting double or triple teamed at low health. The best way to handle this situation is to count their dodges. Keep track of when they use their last one, and then jump back and swing. They will immediately dodge backwards most of the time, but so will you. Here's a uh, replay of that in full speed so you guys can get a better look at it.
Here are just a few clips that kind of tie everything together that we've talked about today. That's pretty much all I've got as far as jump attacks go for right now. I just know I've had some people message me and ask me in party chat how I was doing the advanced jump attack. I say that in quotations. Obviously they didn't call out that. <laughs> um, one of them was asking me if it was a bug in the game because he thought I was going through his block. Like I mentioned earlier, this video was made for noobs and pros alike. So if any of you have stayed this long, go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below and be sure to hit the subscribe button. Make sure you click the bell so you receive a notification every time I upload a new video. The next video to this tips and tricks series is probably going to cover parrying, and off the top of my head I think I know at least 5 types of parries. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for that, I think that's going to be a fun video. Thanks again guys for watching, and if you know any friends who need to see this, send them here. Let's get this channel growing. See you guys in the next one. Vinny out. Let's go!